So we are back with Everlasting Summer, and we're progressing through day five. So everything is uh, past the shirt part now. So I'm curious how the relationship is going to either increase or decrease. Uh, you know, uh, obviously that would happen if you get on her bad ending. Since I'm not doing Alyssa's bad ending, uh, we're going to stay with the good. That's just kind of how I am anyway. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, so other than that, that's pretty much what we're going. Today, I uh, wasn't the uh, last one, so I could choose a free table. Although, you know, uh, other people's bad endings are nearly as bad as I would say and depressing as Lena's bad ending. I'm just going to say it on that. But still, I don't really care for bad endings either way. <laughs> it's just how I am anyway. Lunch included pea soup and mashed potatoes with fish. It was a major disappointment to me as I don't eat fish in any form and hence will get fewer calories than usually. Soon Slavia and Lena came to my table. Okay. Conway. <clears throat> she smiled nicely. Eh? Yeah, sure. I stood up and pulled out a chair for her. Please. I was in an excellent mood at that moment. Okay. Enjoy your meal. Saying that, Lena began staring at me and continued for some time, but then, after realizing how odd she looked, switched to a plate. You too. Do you have any plans for today, Samuel? Nope. I gave her an honest answer, as indeed I had no plans. <clears throat> Except for searching for answers, but that was more like a global goal. Do you want to take a boat ride to the island with us? The island. Well, I think I've seen it from the pier. For what? Oga asked me us to gather some strawberries. There are a lot of strawberries there, and they're so delicious. I could imagine the taste without even eating it, just by looking at Slavia's face. Strawberries? And what are those for? I don't know, but it's indeed a great idea. Well, indeed it is. Moreover, I haven't been to the island yet. Yeah, sure. Hmm. So how's this gonna play out? Within minutes, we were already standing at the pier. Well, here is the boat. Uh, hang on. I'll go and then fetch the paddles back. I was left face to face with uh, Lena. Do you like strawberries? Well, not really. But they're tasty. Lena smiled. I see. I don't know what to say next, but how to continue the conversation. If Slavia didn't come back, we probably we could probably sit there here till you do without saying a word. Here you go. She handed me a pair of hefty paddles. Yeah, thanks. Uh, this scene is familiar. <laughs> it's almost feel like it's doing Slavia's route. We got it to the boat, I untied it, pushed off the shore, and tried to start paddling. And where exactly are we heading to? Right there. She pointed her finger at the island. That island is named the closest one. I wonder what captain gave it such an original name. <laughs> well, the island is indeed close to the shore. Aye, aye, captain. <laughs> if only I'd know what was waiting for me ahead. I wasn't an experienced oarsman. I'd rode a boat just once or twice in my entire life. It was less than half a mile to the island, but we were making our way in zigzags thanks to my skills. By approximately the middle of the trip, my arms hurt so badly that I dropped the paddles to get some rest. Why, well, you are rowing two people after all, ain't it? Well, aren't there any strawberries anywhere else? I mean, in more accessible places. But the tastiest ones grow there. <clears throat> Slavia gave me a puzzled look. Is it hard for you to grow alone? Lena, unlike Slavia, understood everything straight away. Oh. It's nothing. Anyway, I couldn't let a fragile girl help me. The rest of the way, I spent concentrated on staying alive while getting to the island. 
Slobby and Lena discussed something, but I wasn't listening. That was too much for me. At last, we arrived. Ha! Huh. Completely exhausted, I got out on the shore and looked at the boathouse. Now, I like the last time where we came here with Slavia, went with her. We're actually going to go with Lena this time. Not that it's really going to matter, because this choice, uh, it is going to give Lena a point. But, uh, that's pretty much all it is to hear. It seemed so far away that I felt like a first person on the moon watching the earth rise. Here you go. Slavia handed me a basket. It was a small island, barely a hundred meters long, and it looked more like a birch grove with even rows of trees covering its entire surface. A calm green uh, sea spread beneath our feet, with wind causing lovely, lonely waves on its surface from time to time. I need to do some forwarding, because I kind of already know what goes on here. But there are only two baskets, said Lena humbly. Oh, you're right, my bad. So, how are we gonna split up then? <laughs> I find it interesting that they actually wanted to split up here. You would think that they would kind of go together. Like, just pick out strawberries. You know, that would be the more com logical thing to do, right? But since, you know, we're talking about a game with choices, uh, it's kind of how this plays out. But since uh, uh, some of you that are new to this game didn't really... S Saw what Slavia's thing last time. You didn't see Lena, so we're going to do that here. Obviously, this is going to play a part when we do her route as well. But since it's just a temporary thing for the time being, not really a big deal. Let me go with you. Let's go. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Slavia grabbed the second basket and ventured to the opposite side of the island. Although, when I came in here the last time, it's like, did it seem like a little rude that, that they kind of left her? I don't know. They, she, she, he chose uh, to go with Slavia, and the next thing you know, she just kind of just walked off. So like, is it all right to leave her alone? Kind of thing, you know. <laughs> That's funny. Well. Well. Let's go. Yeah. Lena smiled. Just pay attention. Don't leave a single berry behind. You too. Huh. Okay. So, it was harvest time. Indeed, the strawberries here were delicious. I could probably eat them all if I didn't stop myself in time. Despite being wild grown, the berries were close to garden ones in size and had a rich color. So, it was clear that our visit here wasn't in vain. Uh, now, the only reason I went with Lena is because it plays a little bit of a point with Alyssa somewhat. I don't know. Uh, they seem to share points from what I've seen, routes-wise, anyway. Uh, Ilyana and Slavia seem to share points, even though uh, Alyssa and uh, Ilyana shoe a bunk together. It's kind of, they're like roommates kind of thing, you know. It's weird like that, but yeah. <laughs> Lena followed me closely as we had only one basket for the both of us. I felt like a real mushroom picker examining each shrub and carefully pawning the grass. Well, you're much better than me. Am I? Frankly, I I'm not even counting them. Yeah, right, you are. The basket was already half full. You must enjoy nature, right? I do. Huh. <laughs> What was that? The bright sun rays pierced the treetops and blinded me for a second. Blinded me? More like a flash, but I was kind of like, okay, what was that for a second? Not really necessarily blind, I should say. It was more just kind of caught me off guard. I don't know. I sat down on the ground and leaned against the tree. Still, it's so beautiful here. Lena sat down next to me. So close that our elbows touched. Oh, boy. Yeah. We just sat and enjoyed the moment. It seemed like time stood still. The wind gently shook the tree leaves. Uh, some bugs uh, lazily hopped around the grass and splashes of sunlight uh, played on the faraway uh, water surface. Ah, uh, yeah. Pretty popular CG. <laughs> I could have skipped this and went a little bit ahead, but I figured, you know what? It's kind of interesting, but... Uh, but I gotta, I gotta ask, 
Who do you think this arm is this right here between her legs? Like, I mean, if you see this part, like, would you think his hand was there? Or would you think this was her hand? I don't know. It's just kind of... I, when I saw this CG, it's all like, uh, I see what you're trying to do there, game. So, like, you see his arm, right? But you don't really see the other one. But if you notice, uh, his hand is over here. It's, like, right behind her. But if you didn't pay attention to this hand, you would think that this arm was his, right? Kind of thing. Or if you didn't notice the sleeve. It's kind of, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling a little bit. Lena put her head on my shoulder. It's kind of funny. I was surprised at first, but then I heard her regular breathing and thought that it's just a matter of course. Probably she felt drowsy and wanted to take a quick nap. There's more to this girl than meets the eye there, Sebian. But I went, her route will be coming in time. I just sat there and didn't think of anything for a few minutes. But then words started crossing my mind with ultrasonic speed. Lena. <laughs> so close. Okay. Sleeping. So warm. What? <laughs> What's with this dialogue? So gentle. Why are you pausing? <laughs> you thinking and pausing at the same time. Feelings. My goodness. <laughs> I gazed at her. He thought all this in his head. It's like, uh, I'm reading it out, but he's pausing in between of doing each one of those. I don't know. She has such a serene, such a tranquil look on her face that it seemed that right now she's not here, but it's some kind of a better world. <laughs> I don't know what would have happened the next moment if I didn't hear the voice of Slavia. I have no idea. What were you thinking? Were you thinking of leaning over and giving her a kiss, baby? Was that what was, that was going on? And like I said, this, this arm here is kind of like where her arm is. kind of funny, though. But like I said, if you didn't see this hand, you might think this arm belonged to someone else and not necessarily her. <laughs> I don't know. Semyon, they know. I shook my head from side to side a few times to come to my senses. You know, it was kind of funny when him and Slavia were in this part. They didn't really get a CG. They just kind of talked they had a conversation if i recall and that was pretty much that here it's just kind of like i don't know they're not really talking he's more or less just thinking right uh but it kind of works in some ways you know lena started to wake up probably didn't even gonna realize that what she was even doing the whole time she opened her eyes and gave me an empty look have a nice dream huh <laughs> she's only now realizing yeah Suddenly realizing that she had dozed off, leaning on my shoulder, Lena blushed. Of course. Oh, I'm sorry. It's fine. Flavia came over to us, so Lena rushed to get up. <laughs> so, how much have you got? I sighed. That's not a lot. Her basket was filled with strawberries to the brim. Well, it's enough anyway. It's time to get back. I grabbed the basket and we headed back to the boat. You know, but you know what I think, though? It's like, uh, Slavia and Lena seem kind of similar, but different at the same time. It's like, Slavia is like the nature girl, and Lena is more like introverted, kind of shy thing. But they both kind of, you ever notice, they both kind of go about things in a similar way, though. Uh, just one, uh, just slight different personality differences from what I noticed between them. But other than that, you know, uh, there's really not too much. You know, hair color and style, that's pretty much the difference, too. Alyssa and um, Ilyana are definitely similar in a lot of ways, but also, but a little different, too. Like, uh, Ilyana's more, like, she's more the energetic type. Like, she's more, like, tomboyish. And Alyssa just wants people to think she's just, you know, just kind of rebel type, right? Because that's kind of like the way she is. I'm on her route doing her now. But that's kind of what she comes to mind when I think of her anyway. I don't know. The way back uh, took less time as I tried to concentrate on rowing and ignoring everything else. My only wish was to get back alive. As the first trip hadn't gone without consequences and now my hands started to hurt after only a few sweeps of the oars. I'd imagine. Let me just pull this because it's not going to matter. You could have said something if it was uh, so hot for you. Yeah. 
Never mind. It's fine. I'll just lie here for a bit and everything will be alright. Okay. Then, get those straw baskets to the ogre, please. They have something else to do. Yeah, sure. I was ready to agree with anything at that moment, just so I wouldn't have to get up. <laughs> but the baskets pulled the strawberries next to me and headed to the square, happily chatted with me about something. The hardest part is done anyway. That's what I thought before I got up and took the baskets. After the rowing, they felt like cement bags, even while weighing barely more than a few kilograms each. <laughs> Alright, so... Now this is the part where, when he sets it down, now they're going to talk about this uh, hiking type thing where they go. He doesn't really want to go. Oga. Oga, I've got presents for you. There was no answer. I barely managed to get up and enter the cabin. There was nobody there. If you don't need them, it's up to you. I lay down on the deck chair and fell asleep. Ah, oh, yeah, this is the part where you had some daggone dream about this. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though. But I'm going to forward it anyway. I woke up. And I'm just going to forward this because I don't even really. Oh, boy. Ah. Uh, wow, this, this part really has nothing to do with. Um, yeah, you know, guard. Uh. Alyssa, but like last time though, I'm just going to, thanks to the girl's help, so that's probably going to give uh, Lena an extra point, but I'm not really too worried about that. Okay, but that's not all. Seriously, I was just anticipating the lovely rest I was about to have. Do you even know what these strawberries are for? Not a clue. What an honest confession. We'll make a cake out of them. I see. Well, that makes sense. To one of the miraculous rescue of Sheriff. I wanted to know. Well, I mean, I don't know. I I said something similar about this the last time uh, on that. I was like, if you ever get lost somewhere, right? You're out with your parents when you're a kid. Like maybe some carnival or festival, right? Every now and then you get lost, right? What happens usually when they find you? It's like... It's never like, uh, let me give you a piece of cake for that. You know, it's like, you're grounded. <laughs> I don't know. That's usually what comes to mind for me anyway. And why? Please tell me if I am such a hero, why do I have to organize a celebration in my name all by myself? I don't know. Well, I guess. So, I have an important task for you. Yeah, it's going to leave where I said. It's going to have to do with that. But I'm just going to forward it because this part's a little bit boring to me because it's already a familiar scene so I'm not too worried about it I just want to go past here a little bit okay so and there's going to be more of these type of choices but there is one that's going to play into Alyssa we need to go to the infirmary I think uh, but there is something kind of funny that I'm going to do here oh, is, or is it the library I think it is the library but uh, let me double check anyway if Every other place on the uh, cake ingredient list made at least some sense to me. Then flour from the library made none. I thought hard about who would put it in the library and why, but couldn't find any sane explanation after all. Given Zinnia's harsh nature, I'd better knock first. I guess. Okay. Open. Zinnia appeared at me closely from behind her glasses. What do you want? Um, don't think anything weird, but I need, I didn't want to look like an idiot and decided to explain things carefully. I need some flour. Olga said that it's here. I understand that it sounds strange to keep flour in the library, but I'm pretty sure she didn't say that. <laughs> I don't know. You just kind of happened to come here. It's like the last place you would think flour would be would be in a library, right? <laughs> I was sent to you, and it's needed for a cake to celebrate shirts. Uh, rescue. Yes, I have the flower. What's so strange about it? Xavier replied with surprise. At that second, I felt like I'd been hit on the head with a heavy weight and lost the ability to understand anything at all. Flower in the library? 
sure what's so strange about it. The fact that it would be ingredient in a library. But then again, at this place, who knows? <laughs> We're in Wonderland. I'm Alice. Now I'm going to eat that magic mushroom and I'll be back home. You're so funny. What I said, this guy has a wild imagination on things. It's like, no, you're not quite there. Uh, this isn't exactly that. You don't have the Cheshire Eye or cat running around. Stripes on him, right? <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah. That was daydreaming. Wait here. I'll be right back. He disappeared behind the bookshelves while I folded my hands and started waiting. A little later, the sound of a trap door groaning on its hinges reached me. Hey, you need some help? I inquired loudly. I'll deal with it. Xenia barked out to me. She seems to be in the basement, so I'll have to wait a little. Okie dokie. A few minutes passed, but Xenia still hadn't returned. I was starting to get worried when the door suddenly flung open and Alyssa came into the library. She looked surprised too, seeing me here. What are you doing here? Have I not allowed to be here? I said rudely to her. Alyssa was clearly a bit overwhelmed. Ah, what do I care? Sure you do. But you then again, you didn't know he was here. She snorted and had to Zenia's table. And why are you here then? Alyssa measured me with her eyes carefully and almost opened uh, the mouth to say something, but then seemed to change her mind and turned away, hiding her hands behind her back. Returning her book, I put her the first thing off the top of my head. It's none of your business. She replied with a hint of hesitation. What book is it? Alyssa was silent. Oh, come on. Let me see it. I wonder what this high voltage keep away reads. It's none of your business. I mean, <laughs> probably just doesn't want people to know. Hey, you know, I, I was reading a book that Lena was reading out there. You know, God with the Wind, you know, which is a movie kind of made after it kind of thing. Her voice was even less confident. Okay, okay. I don't insist or anything. In fact, I was quite interested to find out what Alyssa was reading. Moreover, I was quite amused to see a book in her hands. I mean, maybe. TV, movies, or a computer, if what were available here, all these things seem to be much more appropriate at a table for a girl like her. Then this is where I would say that he kind of over assumes what people might be into kind of thing, or things about them. Like, I mean, yeah, who isn't on their computer nowadays, or some type of computer device, right? In my case. When it comes to television, though, for me, I was never really much of a TV person. Not that I don't watch TV on occasion, but I was never one to kind of, like, sit down that long. Uh, I don't know. This is kind of the way I was, you know. So I always found other things to kind of do with my time, you know, as far as that goes. But she had a book instead. Now, this is the funny part that I... I did the last time. I don't know if I should really show it, but she makes a face, basically. Uh, it's in the part that I did with Slavia, if you guys were curious about what happened there. Because I showed two parts of that, so this time we're actually just going to go ahead and stay on guard. But the fact that he was curious about this book, I could actually picture him kind of taking this book. And then she gives the familiar look that she knows. Uh, yeah, but we're not going to do that. Curiosity killed the cat. Anyway, it's Alyssa, and that means it could quickly turn into a total mess. Plus, I still have ingredients to collect. True. Well, I'll come later. Alyssa left the library quickly without looking at me. Okay, I gotta be thinking. What could this book... Uh... What could this book could be about if she was so ashamed about it? What could this book be about, you mean? I don't know. There you go. Seems like that scent was a little off. I don't know. And ashamed, Alyssa is something extraordinary by itself. But Alyssa ashamed about, about a book. I don't really think that's it. More like embarrassed, maybe? But uh, what's the point in guessing now? There's no way to find anything out. Finally, Xenia's deep groan rang out, reaching each and every corner of the library. Grab it. I passed by the bookshelves and beheld the perspiring librarian sitting near the trapdoor leading to the basement with a small sack next to it. 
Wow, they might have some sort of a storehouse down there. Thanks. I took the sack and left the library. Thank goodness it wasn't too heavy, so I carried it down to Olga Dimitrinova's cabin without too much effort. Now I'm going to do a little bit of forwarding. Uh, these other parts uh, don't really going to matter too much, so I'm just going to off-screen these, and I'll see you guys on the other side of them, because neither of them really applied to Alyssa here, so just give me a moment. Okay, and we are back. So I took care of those other ones, like I said. Uh, they weren't really too much relevant uh, in them. Although... I could have showed the one with um, where Shirk and them were because they were kind of working on some kind of robot. Uh, but since I did that in, uh, showed that in Slavia's, I feel like, yeah, I'm not really going to show a scene twice in a row. But uh, let's just say that he's got ears on it and that pretty much gives it away that he did see something uh, when we, when, you know, especially in the last part that I put up and last time when they were questioning what he saw down there. He tried to act like he didn't see nothing. Uh, played it off pretty much uh, with a face that he had. But yeah, it's like some type of, I don't know what it was, but uh, it ended up with ears on its head, you know, so it's kind of funny on that. Alright, so let me forward a little bit of this here. I sat down on the bench and closed my eyes for a moment. Now, Somebody's got to walk up to him here because he's not actually paying attention once again. And a person is going to come up to him. What's that? I didn't really give a damn who it was. Probably just a fellow pioneer girl taking an interest in an unfamiliar companion in distress. What are you talking about? I asked her tiredly. She didn't reply. Those are the ingredients for a cake. Do you like cakes? I don't know. What? You never try a cake? I don't know. Obviously the girl didn't get what I was talking about, but it didn't surprise me at that moment. I really wasn't interested in the conversation. I was so tired that I had zero intention of classifying external distractions and tagging them as either common or uncommon. I see. Come down to the canteen later and have a bite. Really? Really? And what are they made of? What? I asked it differently. <laughs> These? Cakes. These cakes? Well, some flowers, some sugar, various fillings. <laughs> now that's a strange question. Doesn't she know what cakes are made of? Some people don't actually, but it's kind of funny. And you have it all here? Yeah, sort of. And sugar. And sugar. Could you lend me a little? Before, I thought it was over the top. A sudden gust of wind made me grab the cart instinctively and open my eyes. However, nobody was there. It's kind of funny how that works. He lays down just for one second and someone's talking to him. And of all times, like he could have seen someone. He decides that, you know what, I'm just going to shut my eyes, keep them closed while someone's talking to me. You ever do that before? It's like, uh, if someone's talking, you ever had your eyes shut? I don't know if I've ever done that before. Maybe, maybe, it's like, maybe if somebody's trying to wake you up in the morning and your eyes are, like, barely open. Like, I can see that, but not where you're, it's like, during the day, like, where he's doing here. You just kind of lie down. It's going to be impossible to keep your eyes shut while someone's talking. <laughs> I don't know. It would kind of get me out of what I'm doing. Yeah. There wasn't a single person near the canteen. No wonder. Dinner was still an hour away. I brought the hand cart to the rear exit and handed the foodstuffs to the cook, camp cook. All right. So let's do a little bit of forwarding here. My eyes closed themselves. I guess I got so tired throughout the day that I didn't even notice how someone came up to me until they patted me on the shoulder. Isn't that kind of funny? First it was a different person. Now it's Miku. It's coincidence like... Uh, one, because she's already been revealed in the CG. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny how that works. And now she's here. Mickey was standing before me. Yeah. I didn't need a mirror to imagine the expression of skepticism and annoyance on my face. Oh, excuse me. I must have interrupted you. No problem. I was just sitting here. Oh, all right then. Miku beamed with a smile. I was just coming to dinner. 
I thought that it's time already, and then it appeared to me that it's too early. But I decided to check in in case. Maybe it's not me who's mistaken, but the clock is. Well, not the clock. Clocks can't be mistaken. It's just that I misread it. She seemed to be ultimately confused now, and fell silent. It's still about an hour, half an hour before dinner. Oh, that's great. Then I'll sit here and wait with you if you don't mind. Frankly speaking, I do mind. Good <laughs> lord. You know, I have some matters to attend to. <laughs> he just has what's nothing to do with her. He just bails. Like, anytime she shows up, it's like, I want nothing to do with this girl. I'm gone. <laughs> if only she could, if only this girl was a mind reader and just thought, like, what he thought of her half the time. It's like, she probably would do something to him. Who knows? Like, <laughs> oh, man. It's kind of funny. I stood up quickly and left without saying goodbye, ignoring Miku as I always did. Yeah, that's kind of that. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the way he kind of tries to blow her off, and she just still ends up finding him. It's just quite interesting. I always say on that. It's like she must know more than what she lets on, as I always say. I think this is the first time in the last four and a half days when I felt like this. I wasn't just irritated because of some insignificant details, but indeed I was really angry. I have completely stopped caring about where I am and why am I here. I don't care about how to get out either. What's driving me mad is that I always have to carry out some stupid task given by our camp leader. Oh yeah, this is what he was talking last time. I'm just gonna forward a little bit of this. Ayana was standing in front of me and smiled shyly. Yeah, let me just forward this. Cause it's okay, okay, it's up to you. You better tell me. Why did you run around the camp the whole day without some kind of bags? I had to. I replied reluctantly. I guess it was food. Maybe it was. Yana was about to say something, but at that moment, the bell rang. Caught on the pioneers for dinner. <coughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let me go with you here. Let me skip this part. Aaron boy. My goodness, I caught that. So, this is the part where I said it gets a little bit random, where I felt like the day five, just, there's certain points where it seemed like they didn't really know what direction they were kind of going in here. It's one of the few parts, uh, I would say, uh, and it's even like this, even with Alyssa's route here, it's like that a little bit with Slobby as well. Like, when they get a little bit port to day five, it's like, they just kind of seemed like they were stalling for time a little bit. Up until, like, you know, to where you get towards, like, when they start doing the uh, hiking thing and whatnot. Um, you know, so other than that, there really, really wasn't too much to this particular day. Uh, it does get a little bit interesting as it gets towards the uh, the latter portion of the day. When it start gets at, at night, but during the day, it's like, there's really nothing here. I don't know. Hey, are you alright? I'm fine. I reply without changing my position. Just tired. Yeah, a little. That's bad. Robbie well, said it seriously. Of course. You remember that we are going for the hike after dinner, don't you? And we prepared everything. What? Where? I opened my eyes and lifted my head up instantly. Lena was standing by Slavia. The hike? She was surprised. Then you know. No. I put my head down on the table and covered it with my hands. <laughs> if only I could sink it to the ground right away. The girls remained silent. I left it all with my thoughts for some time, but that was fine by me. Maybe I could have sat that way until the end of dinner time, but the strong voice of Olga was heard from the opposite end of the canteen. Guys. To celebrate the miraculous rescue of our friend and comrade Sherrick, we baked this cake for you all. Oh, yeah. Familiar CG is coming up here. Uh, let me just do a little bit of forwarding because, uh, yep, this is the familiar CG. The camp leader wasn't able to finish as Ayana rushed out from the pioneer crowd and dived into the cake. Last time that I said, it's like this angle, even though she's grabbing uh, by her waist to try to pull her away, 
you also see how she's standing here. It's like, and you look at her face, it's kind of like, uh, it's something else going on in this scene that, uh, you could kind of make out if, if you take these three other people away from this scene and there was no cake here, what would you think, you know? I don't know. It's like, uh, are you enjoying this back here? Is it like, do you like that position there? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's kind of something that just kind of came to mind when I first saw this. So like, uh, that's an interesting scene you got there. <laughs> she managed to nibble it a few times before she was pulled away. She was kicking and screaming. Uh, I stared blankly from the outside at all this drama. Alyssa smiling, Lena picking up some cream with her finger. All the furious pioneers around. I feel completely out of place here. I thought that if I closed my eyes now and opened them again, here I am back to the safety of my apartment in front of a computer. I blinked but nothing changed. Only the noise and the confusion became sharper. Ilyana, that's the limit. I... I just... Well, in fact, behaving like this is a bit over the top even for her. Not really. It's kind of she. It's something that's normal for her, I guess. This place. Uh, but this is where I would say that she kind of went a little bit over the top. I would say Olga here on it. I would say some scolding is should be warranted, but not too much, you know. Please, Olga. Since the cake is celebrated by return, it's no big deal. He hesitated, and that's what I said. This. Uh, I mentioned like when he's like this, uh, how he has his arms and stuff like that. Reminds me of some type of Ken doll. I don't know what it is. But usually since <laughs> I can't get the other expression out of my face, out of my mind with this guy. It's like uh, this look has no bearing on me now. It's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just weird. It doesn't matter. The camp leader returned turned to Ileana. And you. Today, I'm going to punish you to the fullest extent, so you'll behave next time. Ah, whatever. She snorted and turned back. You won't be going on a hike with us tonight. As if I wanted to. You did, but it's because she said you weren't. I was more than willing to switch places with her. You didn't skip the hike instead of her, but who knew. If I had, had had guessed beforehand, I'd have been the first one to go berserk and smash the damn cake. <laughs> You're kind of nuts. After a couple of minutes of confusion, the pioneers started to disperse. You have to get ready, too. There'll be a lineup at the square in half an hour. I looked straight into the eyes of the camp leader, trying to express my attitude non verbally, but it seemed that I had failed. Don't be late. Ayana was sitting at the table when I approached her on my way to the exit. So, why did you do it? She looked very upset. But she had a right to be so. I wanted to. Ayana replied abruptly. So, you're happy now? Of course I am. Blushing, huh? Good luck with the uh, hiking. She smiled mischievously, sprang up, and rushed out of the canteen. Well, a little bit of luck wouldn't hurt. All right. Now, it's kind of too appropriate where I could make a, at least a to-be-continued and uh, pick up where we left off next time.